Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. October 30th, 2017. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Just another manic Monday. Oh, come on, give me the horn section. Oh, you're going to go from that to that. Good. I need some boost for this. Some boost for <laughs> Welcome to the Savage Nation. So clean now. All that's left of the thugs who beat up old people in the streets with a knockout game. Swept under the rug by the media. The same media that's covering up the gangs of youths that are beating people up at Great America Music Park on the West Coast. Reserving all their hatred for white males like Beethoven. This is the world we live in. This is the world we live in. So, look, I know the Manafort story is all you want to talk about. I know what you want is you want the rancid mixed chop meat of talk radio made from various species. You know, when you buy hamburger today in a supermarket, it comes from different animals. I mean, maybe they're all cows. I can't even be sure of that. But it's not a single cow. It's mixed cows slaughtered in different countries. I wouldn't eat that kind of stuff. And that's what talk radio basically has become. So if you want rancid mixed chop meat, I've got a hammer for you. But if you'd like some filet mignon, stay tuned. Now let's take some calls. Jerry on WABC Line 1, what's on your mind, uh, Jerry? I happen to be Jewish, and I'm like you. I'm a conservative Jew. I was in a half a dozen conservative synagogues, and I had nothing but headaches. They cursed me, they harassed me. I wasn't <laughs> with me. Why am I conservative? I told them. Where wait, wait, let me, you, you go there to pray, and they harassed you for not being a liberal? Oh, they did more than that. They called me the backside of a horse and a hole. They used the BIC. Well, why? All because you what? You backed Trump in a synagogue and they they wanted to kill you? Well, that's even before then. Uh, so that goes back to Reagan and everything else. And now I belong to an Orthodox synagogue. I'm still the most conservative person, but to us, at least. Why, why is it that they assume the Jews are supposed to be liberals? Where did that come from? I don't know. I have four. Let, let me explain something. If God were alive, he'd be the most conservative entity on the planet. God is a super right winger. Take a look at his Ten Commandments. They weren't written for Harvey Weinstein, were they? Nope. So, so in other words, because you actually uphold the teachings of the Torah and of the Bible, they they excommunicated you. Pretty much, they cursed me. They called me an echo. They called me arrogant. They called me a stupid. Uh, I, there's, there's so much profanity that you wouldn't believe, and if that's not bad enough, I'm related to four of them on the West Coast. They all voted on gender and party. Needless to now say, now let Jerry, where did you where did you go to this Jewish temple? Where was this? Well, let's see. Uh, uh, three of them were in Jersey City. Uh, one was in the uh, several of them when I lived in New in New York. In so, are you outspoken? Do you make your politics known when you go into a house of worship? No, but when you have a discussion, they ask an opinion. I'm not one to shy away from giving it. I see. So your opinion didn't meet the group think of the liberals. That's what happened. That's what I said. I, I said, show me in the Bible where it says every darn Jew has to have the same mentality. No, you're my kind of guy. Hang in there, Jerry. Let me tell you something. You're, close, you're closer to the truth than they are, Jerry. Uh, they're the ones who are lost. Jerry, you know, i got to tell you something. As you know, my book, God, Faith, and Reason, will be released on November 14th, even though my publisher sent me a press release with the wrong date on it. It doesn't matter. They said November 17th, but who are they to know when the book is released? I, I'm the one who knows it's on November 14th. But here's the thing to remember is this. The fact of the matter is this is not a religious book. It's a quest. It's an odyssey. And I, in my book, I draw upon my experiences, my personal experiences of others with God and without God, and I share insights from over 40 years of notes from my own Bible that have provided me with solace and hope. 
And I'm sure, Jerry, and everyone listening, that my faith journey will help readers find answers about God and many of life's difficult questions. And I hope that you will enjoy the copy of that book when you receive it, Jerry. Maybe you'll find solace in reading God, Faith, and Reason. That's all I can say. I'm not into organized religion. If I were, I would be very happy if those of you who go to a church on a regular basis or go to a synagogue on a regular basis were to explain to people that there's a multiplicity of opinions about God. But I don't want to talk about God. I know all you want to talk about is the indictment. And so before I do anything else, I will not talk about the indictment. Instead, I have a treat for you. An upstate New York female legislator of uh, the Democrat kind was pulled over for speeding by an honest cop. And I want you to listen to the interchange, which came out today, I believe, on YouTube and hit the newspapers about an hour ago. you got to hear this interchange. Listen carefully. <laughs> Man, you have to calm down. I have, I have PTSD. <laughs> I'm sorry. The reason why I pulled you over was because you were going 43 and a 30, which was 13 over, okay? I was going you at did. the same pace as every car. I couldn't go okay. slower. They honk. They okay, honk that's... at you. I have PTSD. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't help it. Oh, we're going to protest this in court. Are you telling me that you singled me out? In the middle of PTSD, right? she's and pretty clear. And everyone's going thinking. at the same pace, right? I no, drive on that road at 30 she's miles got a shot. all the time. Are you going to listen to me? Or yes, you? I will listen to you, and you're not going to let me go, even though we got me legislator. And I always do everything right, and I follow the law, and I was at the same pace as every other car. Ma'am, you're gonna let me explain this to you here. You let me talk, okay? And then I'll give you a chance to talk, okay? You have to re- just tell me what you're what you're doing here with the ticket because I am late for a job meeting and I'm gonna. I'm, okay. This is my career. Sorry, I'm having a, a panic attack. I, I, I'm sorry. You need Are you listening attention? to this? Is anyone out there hearing this? You like me to call you an ambulance? I've explained everything to you already. But I didn't understand. Okay, and but that's I've, why I I've asked been here you, for about 30 minutes explaining this. See, I've okay. already missed my job interview now, okay, and well, I'm asking you. I have other stuff that I need to do. I know, do but I'm a taxpayer also. in Ulster County. Okay, and I'm also a I've here, in Ulster and I've accommodated you, and, you, no, and I've explained everything you to you to the best of my ability. You didn't explain to me. I'm not going to argue with you any further. How could anyone take this job as a cop? Everyone has a big mouth on them. But this was a special case. I'm a lure maker in Ulster County. I'm a lure maker. In the middle of her PTSD and her hysterics, she was pretty clear thinking on how to get out of the ticket. How does anyone take a job as a cop anymore in this world of ours? Or even a pilot? How can you be a pilot? Anyone who is excellent, anyone of excellence is now subject to uh, being attacked for being excellent in this country. All right, let's move on. Give me some breather music here. I'll move on. I'm not sure what I want to talk about. I tried a couple of things. I know what you want. I know what you want to hear. I'll give you exactly what you want to hear. Maybe I could get a caller from New York who was in the porn industry. That might be more, inter- more interesting to me than than the, the Paul Manafort. And that might be more, more interesting. Brother of Clinton campaign chair. Here's my headlines on michaelsavage.com. Brother of Clinton campaign chair steps down from lobbying firm. Amid reports of scrutiny from special counsel, okay. Podesta Group plays key role. See, this is red meat. Podesta Group plays key role in Manafort indictment. This is what you want to hear. You don't want to hear anything about uh, steak. You don't want to eat steak today. You want to eat that mixed chopped meat from uh, c- tainted sources. This is a sad story. Look what I found for Michael. No, I don't even want to. Las Vegas shooting. California couple that survived attack in Las Vegas die in car crash. Where's God there? Okay, not funny. California amusement park increases security after chaotic night of teen fights. That's a cover-up. It was not teen fights. It was gangs of, quote, youths beating up attendees, stealing their phones and their wallets. Again, cover-up. Kevin Spacey accused of molesting underage boy. Who told you last week, very soon we'd be seeing... In Hollywood, a man boyish uh, uh, accusations. I told it to you when the, when the thing came out. Judge largely blocks Trump's military transgender ban. I'd like to know what he is under the robe. 
Update. Church decides to remove plaque honoring, honoring George Washington. That's in a George Washington church in Virginia because it makes certain people uncomfortable. I'd say throw them out of the church. If you're uncomfortable with the words George Washington, you ought to move to, to Syria and join ISIS. Most of NFL's Houston Texans kneel during anthem after owner's remark. Okay, I have certain things to say about that, which is stop watching the NFL, don't go to the games, turn the shows off, and then when they're not making any more money, who are they going to blame then? You? Okay, 855-400-7282. Act, actor Kenneth Anthony Rapp, Kevin Spacey made a sexual advance to me when I was 14. You know, okay, it happened in 1986. Is there no statute of limitations? What are they going to do, disinter George Washington now and Abraham Lincoln and say he touched someone? And say that every one of the founding fathers touched someone in 1705. Dig him up out of the grave and burn his corpse again. Molly's desert elephants on edge of annihilation get a fighting chance. This is right up my alley. This scares me. This so hurts me that people kill elephants. So finally, they're putting in anti-poaching squads, but they're not killing the poachers yet. That's what's needed, is to go out and kill the poachers before they kill these lovely creatures. Or I have a novel idea for saving the elephants, which is bring them to America. Since people are emigrating from Africa to save themselves, why can't we just lift up entire herds, herds and bring them to, let's say, a sanctuary in Texas or somewhere? I'm being very serious about it. Or if Texas doesn't work... Why not replace the human population in Berkeley, Oakland with elephants? It would be a safer environment for the average human if we had elephants in Berkeley than liberals. At least I think so. Warnings of global outbreak of black death as plague continues to spread. Oh, don't tell any of that to the CDC. They're busy studying other things. Health experts are warning there is something different about a new black death outbreak spreading across the world. Now, you should understand that the words black death unto themselves may be offensive to some and could make certain people feel unwelcome and uncomfortable, but they have not yet gotten around to revising the name of that disease. But you see, in the 1300s, an estimated 50 million lives were lost as a result of the black death. Excuse me for saying black death again. But some 1,300 new cases of the pneumonic plague, which is transmitted by air, have now been confirmed. And now the deadly disease has spread into more African countries after taking root in Madagascar. Countries affected with the Black Plague include South Africa, Mozambique, Tanzania, Kenya, Ethiopia, Comoros, the Seychelles, Mauritius, and Reunion. Not a good story altogether because, as I have told you over the years as a trained epidemiologist, when an epidemic is spread so easily by air, it usually spreads rapidly and will wipe out an awful lot of the human population. God tried a few other times in the past, but he was thwarted in his attempt to cull the herd. And now he's back, and this time with Black Plague. And this, my friends, is a product of liberalism and the open borders. See, if we had firm borders... Do you know why borders were originally created by nations? They were to keep out people who were not from that nation, who might do the indigenous population of the nation harm, whether through war, crime, or disease. But since borders were thrown out first by the Clinton administration, and then almost entirely by the Obama administration, we are now suffering the open borders pox that is plaguing not only America, but all of the West, which is in a suicidal spiral. And that is the rest of the story. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. You want red meat? That's enough with the song for today. I'm getting a headache from it. You want red meat? I'm going to give you red meat in a minute. If you're calling about New York when it was dirty in the 70s or the uh, idiots in the NFL, stay on because I'm going to take your uh, calls on that. An article just came out. Paul Manafort judges who are Deborah A. Robinson and Amy Berman Jackson. Are you ready for this? You better hang on to your seat pants. The... Lawyers, both of them, are extreme liberals who supported Hillary Clinton. The veteran judge that Paul Manafort 
and his associate Rick Gates will appear in front of today, well, they're appearing probably right now, uh, has presided over a list of big-name defendants. You ready for this? And after she gets through with them, the case will be handed over to an Obama-appointed judge who donated $1,000 to Clinton's 1992 presidential campaign. You ready for the rest of the story? U.S. District Magistrate Judge Deborah A. Robinson, the preliminary judge, has overseen cases involving former Washington, D.C. Mayor Barry and NBA player Allen Iverson. Are you ready for more? Here it comes. She was sworn in as a magistrate judge in 1988 and is a graduate of Morgan State U and Emory U School of Law. She is the one who boosted a fine from $10,000 to $50,000 for Sandy Berger, a former national security advisor to President Bill Clinton, who pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor charge of mishandling classified information. Now, you know and I know that Sandy Berger was arrested for stealing classified information in his underwear and socks out of the National Archives. Anyone else who did it would go to jail for life. So big deal. She boosted the fine from ten grand to fifty grand. Berger was reviewing Clinton era documents connected with the work of the September eleventh commission, and he told the court he cut three documents up and put them in the, in the trash. Are you listening to me? He didn't put them in the trash. I know the story well. He put them in his socks. That's why he was called Sandy Socks Berger. So they settled on a ten thousand dollar fine for this kind of crime in front of Judge Robinson, who showed how fair we, she was by upping it to fifty grand. Wait, it gets even worse. This judge, Robinson, presided over the trial of Lewis Scooter Libby, an ex-White House aide who was convicted of lying to authorities and obstructing the probe of an old 3 leak of a CIA operative's identity. Libby, who really did nothing, nothing really, was sentenced to two and a half years in prison, but had his sentence commuted by President George W. Bush. So it's a kangaroo court from the get-go. The judges are the kind of judges you would have seen in the Soviet Union, in my estimation. They already shopped this case of Manafort and the other one to two judges who would have been very happy in the Soviet Union in the 1930s doing the bidding of Mr. Berrier, the head of the secret police in the Soviet Union. That's the world that we live in. That's the world that we live in. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Enough there for she wants war responsible, with Russia this reasonable members of Congress to talk about impeachment. This woman's insane, by the way, and a vicious, vicious, crazy human being who is dangerous for every American out there. She wants war with Russia. That's all she wants, Maxine Waters. This is what she's using to appease to her moronic base. But it gets worse. It just came out moments ago who the judges are who are going to be reviewing this indictment. Are you ready for this? I told you who she was, Jackson. Are you ready for this? Earlier this year, this Judge Jackson, so-called, a Harvard Law graduate, dismissed the lawsuit brought against Hillary Clinton by relatives of victims of the 2012 Benghazi attack. This prize judge, Jackson, ruled that Hillary Clinton neither enabled the attack by communicating through her private email server, nor did she defame the victims' families in the aftermath, according to the Washington Times. So Jackson, the lawyer, the judge rather, who is going to be crucifying Manafort and others, spared Hillary Clinton under some double talk. It should be noted that this Judge Jackson also contributed $1,000 to Clinton's 1992 Democratic presidential campaign. And, wait, while previously working at a law firm, represented former Democratic Congressman William J. Jefferson in a corruption trial. Now, I remember that trial. William J. Jefferson looked, at, looked it up very carefully. That former Louisiana congressman was sentenced in 09 to 13 years in prison on bribery charges after being caught hiding $90,000 in cash in his freezer. Did you know any of this? So this is the same judge who oversaw these cases who is now going to oversee the case of Jackson. Paul Manafort judges, who are Deborah A. Robinson and Amy Berman Jackson, 
a fabulous article with their uh, color drawings, color drawings of them, by uh, artists of Deborah Robinson, so-called judge, and U.S. District Judge Amy Bayman Jackson. These are lifers. They sound to me like the type who screams at their PTSD when pulled over for a speeding ticket and threatens the co- and threaten the cop. That's the world we're in. Let's take some calls on other topics in the Savage Nation. Phone number is 855 400 Steve on WABC, are you still there? Welcome to the program. What's your topic? Thanks for having me. I lived in uh, in Midtown in the in the uh, late eighties and nineties. I was on forty four between fifth and sixth when it was still really rough and had all the foreign shops and everything else. And I'll tell you that city had more heart and more soul back then than it does now because it was real, it was gritty. And I mean, you don't like a Starbucks on every corner and a Cuisinart store next to a Starbucks and next to a Cuisinart store, another Starbucks and next to that, another store selling the same stuff that you saw 15 feet away. What's wrong with you? Look, you go outside anytime after the sun supposedly goes down. You have no idea what time it is. It's like 24 hours sun there. It's so damn bright. It's there's no. Well, what, what are they actually sell in New York on 42nd Street now that all of the dirt and crime has been cleaned up? What's there? It's one story after the other. It's it's tourist attractions and it's it's you name it. Starbucks, it's Disney, it's this, it's that. It's so so it looks like a mall, like a like any mall in America. So you like the the grit, the grime that you actually like the the dirty New York better. Well, you know what it was though. As much as there was the grit and grime, there was more heart and there was more soul. For every one of the porn shops and everything else. There were still the little pop-up churches and the little the little places where you could go in there, you know, for the salvation for the homeless guys and everything else. There was real spirit there. Now, it's- oh wait, I, so are you into religion when you say that? Did you actually go to those churches? <laughs> Look, I, I can't argue. I, I'm uh, I'm I'm a, uh, a Catholic who's wrestling with a nine-year-old who thought that his uh, first communion meant no more CCD and uh, just came to the realization he's got another five years to go. So, uh, oh, 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 so you're a young father. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you got a good, you see, the main thing is you got a sense of humor, which is going to save you and your son. Uh, it, it, it's the important thing, because he's already asking questions, saying, Daddy, how is it we all came from the same person? And it's not like, look, eh, you got to take a look. Oh, children are smart. No, they ask questions that can shake you to your core. And the answers are hard to find. Again, I'm going to tell you, there's a story in my book, God, Faith, and Reason, which I'm going to send you, about my lawyer, Danny Horowitz, and his two young children, and what his four-year-old daughter asked him about God, and how he had to answer it. It's not easy to answer those questions, because children don't let you go. They're very logical children. If you say to children, God is this, and they say, well, what, what does that mean? And they go, da, 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 da. There's almost no answer at the end of the day, is there? No, and, and trying to explain the idea of taking something with faith, it is much harder than saying it, it's something tangible and, and able to say, well, it's because of this and this. And he will not let me go any time that I try to say, well, you just have to believe. Like, ah, Daddy, see, when you to try to steer a child to faith, they become more reasonable than we are. Hey, look, he's more reasonable and rational than most of the people I know at this point in life. Well, it's a challenge, and it's why a lot of children stop believing in anything, because they can't get the, the most fundamental questions answered straight. They go off the rails because they don't know what to believe in. Well, he asked me when he sees the, sees the news and sees, is Daddy, are all Muslims bad? Is ISIS bad? Are all these bad? If we all believe in God, why are they bad? And I've explained, well, we believe in different things. We have a core belief, but what we believe is different than what they believe. Is, well, why do they want to hurt us if they believe it? It's just an endless, uh, you know, it's an endless argument. Well, there is an answer to that question as well, and that's an easy one to answer to a child. You said you're a Catholic, correct? Yes, sir. You say, well, our Bible teaches people to love their neighbor. Their Bible does not teach them to love their neighbor. <laughs> and the reason our Bible now teaches us to love our neighbor is because there was a time that our Bible was very, very mean very cold-hearted and told us to do bad things to people who didn't believe the way we did. But about 500 years ago, our church went through what was known as a Reformation Son, and we learned to teach a nicer way, a better way, a kinder way. Unfortunately, Islam has never gone through a Reformation Son. That is a factual statement, Steve. I agree, sir. I agree. And that is in God, faith, and reason. 
because most modern Muslims understand that Islam must go through a reformation in order for the fringe element to stop being so crazy by interpreting their Bible literally. Steve, thank you. I'm going to send you God, faith, and reason for you and your son. Okay, 855. I didn't think we'd get into the God thing, but that was pretty good. It's better than Manafort, isn't it, and the judges? It's better than this stuff. Anything you want to talk about, we can talk about. How about the NFL and the ingrates who make millions of dollars a year spitting on our flag and our national anthem? David, on WABC in New York, what do you think about that? Um, I've never followed football in my life. And um, just lately I've been seeing signs all around sports bars. I live uh, a little bit north of the city in New York. And they all say no NFL, no NFL TVs here. And I'm like, oh, what? You mean the bar? The bars are putting up signs that say no NFL TV here. Correct. All around. Oh my God! The average Eddie is finally standing up to the to the wonderful people in the NFL who think that the money comes from heaven. Yeah, I mean it, it, it's really it's really about time. I've never. I'd like to know how any cop or fireman in this country of any race could ever, ever, ever patronize an NFL game after seeing what ingrates they are. Uh, well, my philosophy is you don't like it here, then get get out. Who needs yeah, it? you don't like it here, move to Syria. Or move to England where you love the Queen all of a sudden. Don't you love that one? David, I'm, I don't know if you're a religious, I don't know if you're a religious guy or a, a person who seeks the answers, but I'm going to send you a copy of God, Faith and Reason. If you don't want to give it to someone who does. 855-407-282, phone number, michaelsavage.com is the website. Get the free, um, Newsletter goes out to you three times a week. It's free, actually, just by signing up on my website. Let's go again. We're getting all these callers out of New York. I can't help it if you don't, if you don't want to call from everywhere else in America. You know, I'm getting New York callers because they're talkative people, and they're thinking people, and they'd rather listen to other topics than just the uh, mixed hamburger meat of the wall banger. W-A- oh, we did WABC already. Okay, Harry in New York on WABC again, ABC. Harry, what's your topic? Hi, Michael. Uh, My topic was God, faith, and reason. But um, if I may uh, add something to the NFL uh, beforehand, I'm a huge Washington Redskins fan. And I've been on the waiting list for season tickets for over 10 years. It's the hardest ticket to get. This week, I get a call. Oh, sir, we have have tickets for next season available. And if you buy tickets now, we'll give you two free games. And I'm like, I said, what happened? It's, it, there's a, I, I'm on the list for 10 years. They said so, tons of people canceled their season tickets to the Washington Redskins for next season. Huh. Well, good. So, uh, I mean, I, I... All right, now let's go on to the big topic, which is what you called about. What is it? All right, the big topic is I, I, I believe in the afterlife. And I think it's very important. And I, I went on a trip not too long ago with this girl, and she's atheist. We, we, we sit down in a restaurant, and, uh, you know, she orders a nice fish, a fish dish. And uh, the dish comes, and I tell her, listen, I said, you know, the fish jumped out of the ocean onto the plate. And she looks at me like, what are you talking about? I said it jumped out of the ocean onto the plate and it, and it, it got beautiful. She said, no, there's a chef, professional chef that goes to school, that trains, that makes fish like this. I told her, listen, if you're telling me a little simple fish dish needs an expert chef to make it, how could you tell me that this world, <laughs> which is so expertly crafted, has to by itself? That makes no sense. That's brilliant. Did you come up uh, with that on your own? I did, I did. And she still didn't buy the argument. I couldn't believe it. That's really interesting. You're saying, well, let me, you're saying to this girl, the fish dish that looks so good on your plate required an expert chef to prepare that dish, and you don't believe that an expert wasn't required to build this perfect, this world of ours, which is so complex? Exactly. So... Is that your only proof in your own mind that God exists? That's not the most tangible proof that that, that you have. Uh, there's also proof we don't have any any notion of history written anywhere 
you know, uh, of anything else. Within well, what do you think? What do you think happens when you die? Uh, I think we're 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 judged for the good deeds and the bad deeds, and 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 we're punished first to get that out of the way, and then we're rewarded for eternity for the good deeds. That uh, are you a, are you a religious person, Harry? I am. Yes. Are you a very religious I person or a kind of a moderately religious person? Moderate religious. I mean, my family is more religious than me. I'm like the black sheep in my family, but... Oh, no wonder you listen to this show. <laughs> you should know, <laughs> my, my brother, who lives in, in, like, a very religious neighborhood, turned me on to you. He said, you know, there's a there's a guy in the radio who you're going to love. You know? Oh, that's not... Well, even religious people <laughs> listen to me. I know that. It's a funny thing. Yep. Harry, I'm sending you God. I'm sending you God, faith, and reason. I hope you get some solace out of it, and you can share it with other people. Uh, I am running short of time. We're not just talking about God or the afterlife or this life or fish dishes. We are talking about the extreme partisan judges who are going to be judging Paul Manafort and others, and it's a darn disgrace. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Hey, look, sooner or later, you know your car is going to break down if it's an older car, right? You know that. It happens to every truck and SUV car that's older. And if it's lucky, you know, if you're a lucky guy, it happens while you're still under the warranty. And the repairs will be covered. But, 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 what if it breaks down after the warranty expires? You could be out of pocket thousands of dollars to get fixed. That's why I recommend getting extended coverage from carshield.com. 5000 for a new engine or tranny is pretty, pretty ordinary today. Even a sensor that's out can cost over a 1000 bucks. That's why I say go to carshield.com. Why? Because you can even get your own mechanic to fix it or go to the dealership to fix it. You're not going to wait for a check in the mail. In the mail. Carshield gets the mechanic paid directly. CarShield administrators even give you the VIP treatment, providing 24-7 roadside assistance in a rental car while yours is in the shop. So you're not left stranded in the cold. If your car is 3 to 12 years old, pay attention. It doesn't mean you have to pay high repair bills. No, sorry, Bob. CarShield administrators have paid out close to $2 billion in claims they're ready to help you. Save yourself thousands of potential car repairs. Get covered by the ultimate and extended vehicle service protection before it's too late. Call 800-CAR-6100. Real easy. And if you call 800-CAR-6100 and mention Savage or, it, or go to carshield.com and use Savage, you get 10% off. That's carshield.com, code Savage, deductible, may apply. Now, for those of you who think Manafort is being railroaded, of course you're right. And that he has almost nothing to do with Trump, of course you're right. But there's a legal website called lawnews.com that says his constitutional rights were overstepped by the aggressive prosecution of Mueller and his team of vandals. Apparently, they had a search warrant that was granted by some judge over there, and some of the material that they gathered by breaking in Manafort's door and busting in like a Gestapo, they collected some material that may not have been covered by the warrant. And the Manafort's lawyers raised it at the time. And they're saying, did the agents do anything wrong? It's not clear, but it certainly could raise some serious constitutional questions that could taint the investigation. In fact, during the time that Mueller's thugs broke down Manafort's door at 5 in the morning, they took documents from Manafort that were covered by attorney-client privilege, according to sources that told CNN that at the time. Lawyers from the Wilmer Hall law firm representing Manafort at the time warned Gestapo agent Mueller's office that their search warrant didn't allow access to attorney materials. So my friends, this is not over until it's over. It will cost Manafort every dime he's worth and then some, and they're just trying to turn the next one up the chain. Thank you, Maxine Waters, for creating the Soviet Union. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. 
Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel.